This video is brought to you by Surfshark. Welcome back, you beautiful people. We are Gemma and Campbell, and this week it is finally time for us to reach Ireland's best road trip, the Wild Atlantic Way. In case you are new around here, this is our home on wheels, Ellie the Eldest, who we have just brought on our first ever road trip away from the mainland UK over to the Emerald Land of Northern Ireland. After exploring the beautiful and rugged Causeway Coast, the time has come for us to head west to begin our big adventure along the Wild Atlantic Way on Ireland's western coastline. For the next four weeks, we will be touring this incredible part of the world, finding its hidden gems and best park-ups, as well as testing the waters to find our favourite wild swimming spots out of its many stunning beaches. If you want to see what life is like on the Wild Atlantic Way, then make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. But for now, let's check back into where we left off last week at our peaceful park-up on the northern coast of Northern Ireland. That view is absolutely incredible. Like, that was such a good little park up, I'm not gonna lie. Really peaceful night's sleep, no noises throughout the night, no tutors tonight, thank God. And uh, yeah, I'm feeling very refreshed. It is another absolutely gorgeous day today, blue skies, and apparently it's gonna break soon, so we wanna try and get out and make the most of it. So what we're gonna do is head a little bit west, find a nice quiet spot for some breakfast, and then we're gonna go out on our first hike in probably a long time. I cannot remember the last time we went out on a good walk. Ah, there's a car park. Oh, perfect. Well, I've got to say, it is very remote. It did say on the app that we use uh, to go on our hikes called All Trails, and it did say on that that it's a remote, peaceful walk where you won't really encounter anyone else, so it should be a nice walk. What is our pre-hike snack gonna be? Right, okay, we could have porridge, beans on toast, or pancakes. Oh. That's a tough decision, isn't it? One's weighing <laughs> higher than the other, so I think. One's weighing higher because I know we have lots of strawberries to use up. Pancakes it is then. Pancakes. Let's do it. <laughs> Ready? No. Oh, for God's sake. This is what happens oh. when you try to have breakfast on a slope. You do not need this. <laughs> They're going to be covered in sand. We did actually manage to put that rug through the washing machine since last week's video. Look at the colour of that. That used to be like white. That's the colour it should be. And that's the colour it's turned out to be. That's minging. Oh, what are we going to do? Why are we so dirty? Our two weeks ago video when we showed you how grey it was. So it's slightly clean. But it's now covered in sand from last night as well. So we're going to have crunchy strawberries. It's a nice red carpet now. Right, take two if you do one. Huh? Not bad. Not all a disaster. So the walk that we're about to do is up to the northeast of Londonderry and it's up this kind of hill called the Bynavena. It's apparently this really beautiful circular walk that gives you absolutely spectacular views across the sea all the way across to Donegal if it's a nice day, which hopefully today that means the view should be spectacular. What a view we've got here. We've woken up this morning and the views are just so clear, like compared to previous days where we've just had lots of sea fog. You can see right across to Donegal today and it's so quiet here. So actually since we've come out into the countryside, we've actually not seen anybody. Stripey cows up there. Ah, I didn't even see them. How did a cow sneak up on me? Moo. Looks like a zebra. <laughs> I'm not sure they want us to enter. They're all guarding the style. Oh dear. <laughs> Literally circling the style. I hope they're friendly. It's okay. They're so cute. I know, they're gorgeous, aren't they? And that right there is a natural phenomenon known as the Devil's Thumb. I'm not entirely sure about the history of it. I'm guessing it's got some kind of folklore to do with the devil dying and sticking his thumb up to say, Ireland, you look class. But it very much reminds me of the Old Man of Store and the Cuthrang mountain range and the Isle of Skye. Maybe just a little bit less impressive, but it's beautiful and it looks as if it's the result of like some kind of ancient landslide because it's this one standing stack and then that kind of very familiar rocky terrain that you can see all over the Isle of Skye. It is absolutely beautiful on a day like today because I'm standing here with that mountain range on one side, incredible views over to Donegal on the other side and you're in this quiet little kind of serene valley but with like purple heather all over the floor. It is really beautiful here. Well, we've made it up to the top and we still haven't passed another person. 
the lake's just come into sight. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit disappointed. My heart has just sunk. There's about 12 cars over there and just loads of people around the lake. I don't know how they got their cars up here, but oh, just, I was thinking I was just gonna have a wee peaceful dip. No one else skinny dipping for us. I know. Damn. It actually seems like this is the number one fishing spot in Northern Ireland. I don't know if we'll be able to get in for a swim, to be honest. We'll end up getting tangled up in all our fishing lines. There's just fishing for it everywhere. I know. I know. Oh, that's so disappointing. There's a nearest beach. <laughs> I know, I think we, we visit to the beach afterwards. I was just looking forward to getting a wee wash in, to be honest. Yeah. Does that look enticing or what? So much so. It is so hot. Very ready to go and do some body surfing in those waves. And just like that, I think unfortunately our time in Northern Ireland is actually coming to an end. We just checked the weather app and over the next two days there's going to be massive thunderstorms all down the eastern coast. So we are going to try and get as far west as we possibly can, which means we're going to be heading down to, towards the small town of Donegal. Before we go though, we've got one quick stop we need to make. We just wanted to say a quick thank you to our favourite VPN network, Surfshark, for helping support this channel and also keep our personal data safe and secure when we are on the move. For those of you who don't know, a VPN network is basically a shield that we can use to protect our private data, such as our passwords and our credit card details, when we are using the internet. Surfshark protects you by encrypting all of this data that we pass between our computer and the internet so that no one can steal the sensitive information. But a VPN network can also be used for so much more than just protecting your data, as it can also be used to access TV programs that aren't currently available in the region that you're currently in, such as the American Netflix TV shows or just watching live sports on your home network whilst you are out of the country. If you already don't have a VPN network, then we cannot recommend Surfshark enough as we've been using it for the last year now and it has made our lives on the road so much easier. It is also currently the only VPN network that allows for one account to be used across an unlimited number of devices, means that you can share it with your entire family. You can try Surfshark today using our code HAMMOCKS for 83% off the price plus an extra three months free and there's a 30 day money back guarantee so there is absolutely no risk if you want to try it for yourself. To get started just click the link in our description box below or scan this QR code right here and you can start trying Surfshark for yourself today. And so for the first time ever, we're about to take Ellie out of the United Kingdom. This is actually very, very exciting. I think the border's just up here. We're going to Ireland, baby. That is exciting. It is, that's pretty cool actually, yeah. All of this time, we've only ever driven Ellie inside the UK. That's about to change. And it's only the beginning. We have plenty more further afield trips planned for Ellie. So I'm excited to start with this one. Yeah, you see on the map. Oh. Find the map, find the map. I can see it on the map. It's coming up. Oh. That's it. Ta da! Is that where's the sign? Yeah, back 12. There was a signpost to our speed limit. Oh. And that's us! We're in Ireland! So the only differences are it's in kilometres per hour instead of mile an hour. It's now in euros. And at least we're driving on the left hand side, which is a good start for like a new country to visit. Yeah. Because I don't want to be jumping straight into driving on the wrong side as well. And so began our big Ireland road trip. One filled with stunning coastal views and fascinating ancient castles. As well as some of the strangest experiences we have ever had, more delicious cakes than we could count, and some of the best park ups that we have found in the entire world. This road trip in Ireland was going to be like one we have never experienced before. So let's get stuck in. Our road trip began all the way on the western coastline of Ireland, just past the small town of Donegal at the peaceful harbour of Mount Charles Pier, where we decided to pitch up for the night at a local air and celebrate the start of our new adventure with a barbecue with one hell of a view. This place is so beautiful and so very busy. Very busy. Very busy. Very busy. A lot busier than I was expecting. Well this is not at all what I was expecting it to be like but it is absolutely beautiful. There's actually just such a lovely atmosphere here guys, like it's so relaxed, there's families everywhere, there's kids still playing in the water at half past eight at night and yeah it's just, it's a very nice park up for our first stop off in Ireland and I'm very excited for what future ones we've got to look forward to.
Oh, I got, what I have we got, baby? I got you some couple of bits of baguette because I know you're hungry. Oh. I've got some brie left over. That's going on the burgers. Good. And then on the barbie, peppers with halloumi and courgette. So this little park up is at Mount Charles Pier and we've got an absolutely beautiful, beautiful view. It costs 10 euros per night and there's also bins and water top up facilities. So it's not too bad to be honest. And we can have a barbecue with a lovely water side view. So I can't complain. Slange everyone. Now that is not a bad view for a park up at all. For the last couple of days we've been parked here at Mount Charles Pier just outside of the town of Donegal and I've got to say it's probably one of my favourite park ups yet. It is this cute little harbour town and it's actually a really good overnight spot where they charge 10 euros for a night, they provide bins, they provide water and best of all, wait for this, this is the best part. And not only does this place have a beautiful view but it also has a little petting farm up beside their cafe so we're going to go and check out the animals. That's Bruce and Babe, they're in there snoozing. Oh, this place is so cute! So not only do they have a huge bunch of different styles of like chickens and geese, there's even a peacock and a little baby goat. It's so cute, it's definitely one of the most unique cafes that I've been to, I'm not gonna lie. I just love these ones. They are so cute! I love these ones with the afro and like, they look like they've got some like big boots. So just chatting to the owners there, they were basically saying that some of the animals are rehabilitated and some of them are actually from an old mobile zoo that used to kind of run in the area, but it had to shut down because of COVID. So they've taken the animals in there and they just look after them now. So if you want to come to Mount Charles Pier and grab a coffee, you can also go and do it with a view and some really cute animals. But yeah, it seems like the heat wave that's been hitting the UK is now well and truly over and we're actually seeing what Ireland weather is usually like because it's grey, it's starting to rain. Oh dear. But nonetheless, we're out and about exploring today. It seems like there's lots of really good motorhome parking, which is a good sign. Bikes are well in the bushes. So the Sleeve League Visitor Car Park is actually still a bit of a walk away. I think it takes about 45 minutes. So instead of doing that, what we are going to do is jump on one of the buses that runs from here. It takes 10 minutes to get to the cliffs and it costs just about 6 euros per person. What do you think? Is that not just like one of the most incredible things you've ever seen? Absolutely stunning. I, I don't really know what I expected because I hadn't really done much research into this. Um, someone just said to us yesterday that we should visit. So we're like, yeah, sure, like, let's hit it up on Google Maps and go there. And I'm just like blown away. They are 601 meters tall, these sea cliffs, and they are the tallest in Europe. Wow, very rugged, very beautiful. I think after spending our time in Guernsey, we saw a lot of sea cliffs over there and we kind of became a bit like, meh, you know, seeing it all, but just coming here and seeing that, like 600 meters straight down into the ocean, it just blows my mind, absolutely blows my mind. I don't even think the camera is really doing it justice because it is just massive. I'm so glad we came here and I am so glad we got the bus. That is well worth the money, by the way. Six euros return and saves you about, I'd say about an hour and saves you a lot of uphill walking. So very much worth it. If you, if you, even if you park at the car park, like closer to the cliffs, you still have, I would say, a good half an hour, 45 minute walk. And also I think I saw the parking was five euros for two hours. So six euros each return on the bus. We were here in 10 minutes and we know we've got a bus to go back to. So worth it. Hiya. 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 Thank you very much. So we have been over here now for a week and a half and we still haven't had an Irish ice cream so time to taste and try. Oh that is good. Mmm. I've gone for the old trusty mint chocolate chip. It was €2.50. Campbell's gone for a vanilla. We have got the perfect view to sit and eat them and the sun's come out as well. I didn't bring my sunglasses, a bit bummed about that, but <laughs> good view and a good ice cream. This is definitely one of the best vanilla ice creams I think I've ever had. It's so creamy and there's like bits of vanilla all the way through it, so it's like proper authentic vanilla ice cream. And bonus, I even got a wee bit of mint chocolate chip. That means I need to taste Look a bit at that. of yours. 
not the mint chocolate chip bit. No. Mm, Shall good. I yours? Nah, but no, it's one more bit. No. <laughs> mm. That is good. That is, really that is good so banana. good, man. Wow. As we waved goodbye to Sleeve League Cliffs, it was time for our first experience of van life chores in Ireland, and we were wondering just how easy it was going to be to find the necessary facilities. First up, we need to go and empty our toilet and top up our water, and there's this little place not too far from Donegal called the Spearston Camper Van Stopover bit. It's basically like someone's back garden, and they offer all of the above services for 10 euros, so it's actually really good. Right now, just give me a red hat and suit now, and I'll look like Santa. And I do this washing. Put your laundry in the machine, close the door. Do I need soap? Tonight on the menu, we are going to have a mac and cheese. I've not had this for ages, so I'm really, really excited to make it actually. Normally, we would use a recipe from a recipe book called Nutrition, but I actually, well, I have the physical book at home, not with me, so I don't really know the recipe off by heart. Um, but we're going to give it a go. I kind of remember the key ingredients. And yeah, I'm excited for a good old stodgy mac and cheese tonight. It's good to go in the oven. Well, I've got to say, I am very, very excited for this, but I just don't know where the day has gone today. It's currently 10 past 8. We've still to eat this. We've, our laundry's just finished and then we've got about half an hour to drive south to our park up for the night. But yeah, I'm looking forward to this dinner. Oh, looks good. Oh, hallelujah. Amazing. Okay, time for a taste test. Ah, oh, you know it's gonna be good. That's good. Mmm, <laughs> well done. It's creamy, it's cheesy, it's mustardy, and the quinoa and breadcrumbs just give it such a lovely little mm. topping. That is amazing. It is definitely time to hit the road now, and I believe we might have overstayed our welcome. It does say one hour max, and we've been parked here for about four hours, so hopefully there's no cameras. But our parking spot for the night is about half an hour south, and yeah, we are trying desperately to get there before the sun sets, so let's get going. Okay, moment of truth. Aha! Well, there's other more homes here. So, yes, at least we know that we will should be able to sleep. Oh, the other fans here. Good. This that spot. Is... See, if we got here earlier, this spot would have been beautiful. Oh, I think we're all good. I think I've found a spot for our morning workout. That is beautiful, man. Where's that? Is that? Where's Just out in the grass there? That is beautiful, man. That is like, yeah. Cracking, we spot this. Bedtime. Bedtime, <laughs> let's go. 